Remember when you first stepped into a grand cathedral and your gaze was pulled upward by the towering arches and intricate stained glass? That feeling of awe, once a cornerstone of Catholic worship, seems to be fading. Hello, and welcome to Our Walk Together. This is the place where we have a chance to listen and to learn from others on our walk. My name is Paul Long, and I will be your host, but also a fellow traveler. I'm glad that you're able to join me today on Our Walk Together. Hello, and welcome to Our Walk Together. The episode today comes from a few things that I've been noticing, that I've been observing, uh, and things that I think we need to, to think a little bit about. First is the absence of young people and young families at Mass. I know this isn't just a Catholic thing. It's, a, it's across the board in all churches, and I think the root causes are all the same. And secondly, from the behavior I witness in church, I continually wonder why the time before Mass begins has become a time to share all of the latest news, medical issues, or just plain chatter. It's very loud sometimes, and there are times when the time before Mass sounds like a sporting event before the action begins. I sometimes wonder where the lessons of respect and silence in church, at least as I was taught, have gone. That sense of using that time to prepare yourself for what's about to happen, rather than a social gathering. Now, what does this have to do with our topic today, the topic of awe? It's, it's my opinion that this loss, the loss of awe, is a big reason why attendance is an issue today. In a time when ancient rituals met modern interpretations, many wonder if we've lost touch with the sacred wonder that once drew people in. And as we explore this shift, we'll shed light on why this change is happening and what it means for the faithful today. Discovering the reasons behind this transformation could lead us back to moments that inspire true reverence in our spiritual lives. Examining the history of Catholicism, awe has played an essential role. This profound sense of wonder wasn't just an emotion. It was central to the experience and the practice of faith. Let's explore how awe was built into the fab fabric of early Christian life through rituals and vibrant teachings. In the early days of Christianity, awe was more than a fleeting feeling. It was an anchor for belief. The first Christian communities understood that awe could transform an ordinary moment into a holy experience. When followers gathered for prayer or they listened to stories of Jesus, they did so with a sense of wonder Awe wasn't just in the miracles. It was in the every sunset and every act of kindness, reminding them of the deeper presence in their lives. Rituals in the Catholic Church are designed to inspire awe and connect be believers to the divine. Consider the Mass, where the act of communion brings a sense of sacred mystery. The sacraments, the other sacraments too, from baptism on, offer moments of deep spiritual reflection. Each ritual is a step on the path lined with awe. Encouraging believers 
to see the holy in the here and now. These practices are like signposts guiding the faithful through the journey, a journey of spiritual discovery. Key figures like St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Therese, St. Thomas Aquinas, and the, the recently and soon to be canonized Blessed Carlo Acutis have more have, and more have emphasized the importance of awe in their teachings and in their example. Aquinas believed that awe was a natural response to God's greatness, bridging the human and the divine. He argued that awe could lead believers to wisdom by opening their minds to truths larger than themselves. In many ways, theological writings served as a guide, helping people be, to see beyond the everyday and to touch the eternal. There can be little doubt that, that Francis taught and lived this. He found the presence of God in all things created and was in awe of all of this. In analyzing these elements, it kind of becomes clear that a sense of awe was not an optional extra in Catholicism, but a core component. It was through awe that early Christians deepened their faith and felt a direct connection to the divine mystery. In recent years, many have, have noted a shift in how Catholics perceive awe and wonder in their faith. This change, influenced by both internal and external factors, has reshaped how many experiences and how many rather experience and understand the divine. Let's look at some of these influences. The rise of secularism has played a big role in transforming religious perception. In a world where science often explains what was once thought to be mysterious, the sense of the supernatural can feel less present. Does this mean that awe and wonder are now necessary, are now, excuse me, relics of the past? Not necessarily. While secularism encourages people to question and understand through reason, it can overshadow the mystical aspects of faith that inspire all. Oh, this shift has led to a more pragmatic view of religious rituals. Uh, to many, Traditional practices might seem outdated in a society that values empirical evidence. Yet, for those who engage genuinely, the divine can still be a source of awe, just in different ways than before. Modern worship has also evolved, leading to changes in the, experiences, the experience of awe. Take a moment to think about contemporary churches. They might feature rock bands, multimedia displays, and a more relaxed atmosphere. For some, these innovations foster a closer connection to faith. For others, they detract from the solemnity and the mystery that once defined the church experience. We need to be open to both. We need to be providing for both. Society and culture have equally contributed to this shift. We are in an area saturated, an era saturated by technology and media. With instant act access to information, the mysteries of life become more accessible. This has influenced religious experiences too. With social media and constant connectivity, the answer to most questions is just a click away making old world wonders seem quaint. Moreover, a popular culture can often paints religion as outdated or irrelevant. This portrayal can seep into public perception, coloring how individuals see their own faith. Yet culture can also spread religious awareness. The challenge lies in balancing new influences with the deep-rooted tradition that has defined Catholicism for centuries. In short, the sense of awe in Catholicism is not lost, but is transformed and shaped by contemporary influences. 
As society progresses, so does the personal journey through faith. Reflecting on these changes can help rekindle that sense of wonder that resonates deeply within us. Have you ever stood on a mountain peak and felt that rush? A sense of being part of something much bigger than yourself. That, my friend, is awe. Psychology recognizes awe as a powerful emotion that shapes how we see the world and our place in it. From a psychological standpoint, awe is complex, a complex emotion that combines surprise, admiration, and sometimes even fear. It happens when we encounter something vast that challenges our understanding. Think of the wonder you feel under a starry night sky or the chills from an inspiring piece of music. This mix, mix of amazement and wonder is universal. It's being a part of what makes us human. Awe often involves something much bigger than ourselves. It prompts us to adjust our mental frameworks to understand new experiences, whether through nature or art or our ideas, awe stretches our minds and pushes us to think differently. It's not just a fee fleeting feeling, but a gateway to curiosity and creativity, making it a fundamental part of human experience. And when it comes to spirituality and religion, awe plays distinct roles. Spirituality is often personal and subjective focusing on individual connections with the universe or a higher power. Here, awe is intimate, like a quiet conversation with your soul. On the other hand, organized religion provides structured settings for experiencing awe, like cathedrals or sacred rituals. These, these communal settings can amplify the sense of awe, but they, they may sometimes feel scripted, lacking the spontaneity of personal spiritual moments. And so spirituality is often personal and unique, focused on one's inner self and their connection to the cosmos. Religion is structured and communal, often involving shared experiences that foster awe in a collective sense of awe. The difference between these experiences can be likened to reading a novel versus attending a public artistic performance. Both can be awe-inspiring, but they resonate differently with each individuality. In spirituality, awe might sneak up on you during, during a solitary walk, like, while in, in religion, it, it can hit you like a wave during a powerful sermon. And yes, there are still some priests who have been given this wonderful talent. Awe, whether in the quiet of one's heart or the grandeur of a cathedral continues to be a vital part of how we connect with the divine and with each other. In today's fast-paced world, the sense of awe in Catholicism seems to be fading because awe is that deep spiritual feeling that connects us to something greater than ourselves. It's like the spark that lights the fire of faith. But how do we bring it back? Let's look at some ways we might be able to revive it. Think about how it would be if attending mass could feel like stepping into a, a sacred place that takes your breath away. By introducing innovative liturgical practices, churches can reignite that sense of wonder. This isn't about challenging core beliefs but about making the experience feel fresh and meaningful. I've seen, sadly, many ugly church interiors, many of them in new buildings. They're bland. There's no life. There's nothing to excite you. They look like a theater. We can transform church interiors very easily with art with lighting and visuals that captivate the senses. An important part of that 
is the scriptures those who share the scriptures need to learn how to read the scriptures in a way that takes them from being dull words to exciting sparks reading the scriptures is not just a recitation of words on a page they're meant to be alive they're meant to give life and the people who read them need to bring that life forth in how they read and what they say music also a, a blend of traditional hymns and with contemporary music to connect with more people this is important I leave it to the musicians to describe exactly what that means. But again, some things we hear are designed for personal meditation rather than communal praise. These ideas can turn a regular service into a moving experience, helping parishioners feel a deep connection to their faith. Awe doesn't just happen in isolation. It's often felt when we're part of a community. Our churches should foster environments where people feel like they belong to something bigger than themselves. Education plays a big role in understanding and appreciate, appreciating the depth of faith. Introducing educational in initiatives can shed light on the mysteries of Catholicism, sparking curiosity and awe. Bringing awe back into Catholicism isn't just about grand gestures. It's about creating authentic experiences that touch people's hearts. Rediscovering a sense of awe in Catholicism is crucial for breathing life into the faith. The ritual and tradition of the church hold the power to captivate, to inspire, but they require a fresh lens to remain impactful. Engaging with all of these practices Practices can, in some cases, rekindle a deep appreciation and wonder for the sacred. Catholicism must evolve while staying true to its roots. Inviting younger generations into this transformative journey ensures that awe doesn't become a relic of the past. Encouraging open dialogue and embracing modern storytelling can make rituals more relatable and meaningful. Consider what sparks awe in your own spiritual life. Reflect on how tradition and innovation can coexist to enrich your faith experience. Share your thoughts. Participate actively in your community's, community's discussion on, on this topic. Help to share a Catholicism that inspires awe for years to come and invite others to share that with you. Well, the music means that our time together is at an end. I would like to thank you for walking with me today. It's been a great blessing. All of the information about the podcast is available on the website, ourwalktogether.com. Please invite your friends to also listen. You are the best advertisement. And so, until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine on you and be gracious, gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you His peace.